Would you believe me if I said you could get a calcium reactor for $22? So I was looking for ways to reduce nitrates in my 180 gallon tank. Basically, I was looking for a reactor that I could find for cheap, which I could just put denitrifying media in. Now, they are quite expensive and basically the cheapest thing I could find that would function the same way. All I really needed was an inlet and an outlet, which I could reduce flow, was about maybe $75. That was the cheapest thing I could find. But... It also made me come across CO2 reactors. Now, CO2 reactors are used in the freshwater hobby to dissolve CO2 into the water so you for your plants. And this is the most effective way because uh, dissolved CO2 is more accessible to your plants rather than the bubbles. So many uh, freshwater hobbyists use CO2 reactors to use their CO2 more effectively. Now, the job of a CO2 reactor in the freshwater hobby and the saltwater hobby is effectively the same, which is dissolving CO2. Now, the difference is that in the freshwater hobby, you dissolve it so your plants could use the CO2, while in the saltwater hobby, you're dissolving it so you could reduce the pH to break down uh, coral skeletons, or which most people use crushed coral. Now, there is many types of CO2 reactors, but this one in particular seems like it could fu essentially function as a calcium reactor, a budget calcium reactor. Now, this would probably be effective on tanks, maybe I have no idea for sure since I haven't actually used one and I ha don't have any need for it. And that's why I'm actually looking for you guys to test it out for me and tell me how it works because I'll have no need for it. And hopefully it'd be useful for some of you out there. But it probably is useful in the 20 to 50 gallon tank range. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to go on hit up Amazon. I'm going to be going on Amazon.com just because most of my viewers are American. But there isn't a significant difference. Now you're going to want to search up Gulf Stream Tropical CO2 Reactor. You're going to scroll down. And you're going to find this guy over here. What you want is the biggest one you could find. For the reason is you're going to dissolve more of the CO2 in the larger one. So essentially, and you could fit more calcium carbonate in it. So essentially bigger is better when it comes to this. And this is the largest one I've found. Now if you find a bigger one that is within a decent price range, you should also let people know. But this is the one I'm talking about. And I'll basically show what its function is and how it works. So. What's going to happen is. This, how, well how this CO2 reactor works. Is you have your intake from your pump or. In the fresh hot water hobby, you'd be hooking it up to your canister filter, but you could just use a pump on this. Now, I'm not sure what size pump would work. How this works is you're pumping the water into here, and you can see these plastic parts here. That is basically impeller. The water is going to go in this way, and it's going to cause the impeller to spin. There's a CO2 intake right here, and the CO2 is going to go in here. Now, since the CO2 is a gas, it's going to stay up here while this is spinning, which is going to get the CO2 dissolved into the water, which would be below. Now, as you look at the bottom, this is where the intake is. So, all the CO2 is getting mixed up in here. The water is coming in through the top, and the water is exiting through the bottom and goes up this tube into your tank. So, essentially... 
all you have to do is just fill this up with calcium carbonate. Now, this is a small um, reactor, as you can see. So my guess is you're better off filling it up with argonite sand, since I feel like the larger pieces of calcium carbonate might not even be able to fit in this tube. So you're better off using argonite sand, which is essentially crushed coral, but finer grades. Now the craziest thing about this is the price. $21.14 now for essentially a calcium reactor. Now the next thing I'd like to point out is if you don't have a CO2 kit ready right away, there are little CO2 uh, bottles that you could buy that freshwater tank hobbyists use to provide CO2 in their tank. Though I wouldn't recommend this since they are quite expensive and CO2 is actually quite cheap as you could also get CO2 from paintball stores. They use that in the paintball guns and refueling a can of CO2 is actually rather cheap. And when you're buying a can of CO2 online, you're essentially paying for the can, not the CO2. Now, the craziest thing about this video is not only did I find a cheap calcium reactor, I also found cheap meteor reactors. Now, basically the difference between the two is that a calcium reactor would require an inlet for CO2. Now, you could obviously do a DIY on these two meteor reactors as they are larger, which is a possibility since it is cheap. Also, these meteor reactors. However, these media reactors aren't true media reactors. However, they are under $30. What I'm looking at here is Sun Sun's uh, pre-filter, pre-canister filter. And essentially it is what it says, uh, pre-filter for your canister filters. And it's a mini canister filter. Now, I haven't used a reactor myself before. But essentially, it has what you have on most reactors, an in and an out. So if you're looking for a budget option for a small tank, this could possibly be an option. I'll just show you what it says. Now obviously a lot of the stuff in the description is if you could, for um filtering uh, stuff from the water but you could also use it as a reactor since as you can see water goes in and water goes out and you have adjustable nozzles to control the flow so you could put media in there and let it do its thing for your reactor and the good thing also is it's clear so you could actually see through it. I'll also like to show you this version or this model. It is also a canister pre-filter, but this one requires a bit more DIY with it but it does hold more media as it is larger and it's only slightly more expensive and what I mean by it needs more DIY is right here right here is what I want to show you as you can see in the picture in out but the problem is First of all, this, um, since it has a poly filter screen, uh, screen that goes down, all the water could go past through this way as well from the inside. So you're going to have to replace that with a solid tube that runs to the bottom of the canister. And also the nozzles on the outside don't come with uh, flow adjustment knobs. So, you're also going to have to add those as well. But the advantage of this one is it's larger so it holds more media. 
So this one requires a bit of DIY, but it's larger and personally it looks nicer. Also, I forgot to mention, it doesn't come with a media basket like the other one, which I will show you again. Like this one. As you can see, this one's a bit smaller. The other one had 24 inches, I mean 24 centimeters of just filter area. But this one from the bottom all the way to the intake tube they're measuring it from is 29 centimeters. So it's quite a bit smaller. This one is also slightly wider, but the other one is still larger. But this one does come with a media basket to hold your media so it can easily remove it. And it also has intake and outtake flow adjusters. So this one comes basically uh, fully ready for use. While the other one doesn't, which may be a hassle as you will have to do a little bit of DIY with that one. A bit more DIY with that one. So I might go with this one. I'm not sure which one I'll use yet. Is it worth the extra space for a little bit less work? I might just go with this one though. Just because... Less work is pretty convenient. But you guys could decide what you want to try and use for your own media reactor. Now, to my freshwater hobbies to watch my videos, I have quite I have a few, but not many. I actually am going to be using, well, I plan on using one of these media reactors or pre-filters um at least i might i was as i was saying i did have problems with nitrates in my 180 gallon tank and as i said i have silver dollars and i really can grow plants in them I kind of do have a plan to grow plants in them actually, which is it's going to be a secret. I'm going to release it in a later video, but I have to get my lights set up and that might take a while. So I might actually end up getting one of these media reactors or go with um, Pond Matrix. I'm not sure which one I want to use yet. Um, I'm either thinking of buying denitrate, putting in one of these media reactors, and that's going to get anaerobic bacteria to grow, which will reduce nitrates. Or I was thinking of getting just, just filling my uh, FX6 with um, uh, Pond Matrix, which on the Seachem website says Pond Matrix reduces nitrates since the on the outside, the aerobic bacteria, which is the bacteria that use oxygen grow on the outside, but on the inside of the media, since the bacteria on the outside are already used all the oxygen, on the inside you get anaerobic conditions. I'm not sure which one would be better because I know that, or my guess is that using the denitrate in one of these would probably be more efficient, but it is also possible that... um using the pond matrix just might be enough because if I could just fill my FX6 with pond matrix that's much simpler than um, having to buy another filter uh, and then adding denitrate and then getting the specific flow but I do have a plan for that on my FX6 and I will hopefully show you that if I um, do it on my tank if I um, don't do it on my tank, I will put out a video and tell you what you can do if you want to try out this method. And if you do try out this method, let me know how it works. Um, thing is, not many people go with nitrate reactors on their fish tanks. So I will be really interested to hear your results. Though I will point out that nitrate reactors take a while to break in could go from any take up to six months people say to get these working 
So if it doesn't work in the first month, still give it some time. What's going to happen is you should be reading lower nitrates on the outtake of this uh, denitrate reactor than compared to your tank. And eventually it should read zero on the outtake of the nitrate reactor. Either way, I want to give this a tr I might give this a try. And if I don't, I'll, I'll explain to you how you could easily set one up on your FX6. Because there is a part on the FX6 which makes it much easier to do. And also m many of the, you could also set them up on your regular filters since it already the one of them already come with um, flow reducing valves. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and found out something useful. Uh, give the video a thumbs up if it if you liked it, and um, please subscribe. Helps me out. Hopefully, get an MPS tank one day. That's the goals. Thanks.